a system which has uh, flown uh, below the tree top and this time we have established and uh, proven the system for 5 meter a uh, sea skimming of this nature it's first time in the country has heard about this technology this has a high potential of uh, application from uh, ground based air based and uh, uh, sea based so it uh, the user uh, the tri service can take up this uh, system and it's uh, proven to its capability we are uh, gtre is uh, capable of giving engine also for this we are already on the acceptance level final uh, clearance level and with the indigenous seeker this will be a total uh, indigenous system and this capability it's uh, uh, long range on 1000 kilometers uh, subsonic cruise it's a system which is requirement of the country today i can say i am fairly indigenous but still there is uh, some areas which we have to enter into it one of the essential area is to have a indigenous engine which we plan to test it and also to integrate already a proven uh, seeker which is already proven in a missile complex that need to be adapted and make it to be useful so that we can give additional role for the nearby it can it will be suitable for a variant in another capability enhanced capability it will be able to give it so that is the two things which we look forward in the coming days if you put a seeker we will be able to enhance the role for a anti ship role and it is applicable for any variant whether it is a air launch or a ground launch or ship launch and anti ship role be another extra capability either you use it for anti ship role or you use it at the fixed target as it is existing today so both are value addition to the system hello everyone welcome to this new edition of tamac talking today we have two very special guests with us for this program that is mr prasad who is the director of aeronautical development establishment in bangalore and dr patrick kennedy who is a joint director of nirbhay subsonic cruise missile program in this episode we'll get you some inspiring insights into this happening missile program of india let me start with you prasad sir i did little bit of research on your career that's spanning close to four decades yeah, yeah roughly 35 years in the rdo you have seen before moving to bangalore you have seen many many missile programs was virtually part of i would say all major missile missions of india and then you were uh, at the at the launch base isn't it for it like uh, yeah I Chandipur you were there for a tidy for a long time and then to Bangalore your friends told me that you very recently made a trip to the Himalayas yes and there is some significance attached to it yes can you share what is that i have been uh, waiting to see the lay and uh, other border areas because um, my father was a second world war soldier and then uh, after independence he fought the 1947 war against pakistan and um, the war front was in jammu and kashmir and uh, after few years he came back and uh, took up a civilian job and uh, he brought us up my childhood Uh, went with the stories of his so you grew up listening experience. to war stories yes that was could have been very uh, very exciting. interesting and imaginative so how old were you then as a i was about 5 uh, to 10 years age and uh, he used to explain the use of guns ammunition so weapons weapons so early lessons of weapons came yes. from your dad yes yes and um, probably Uh, his uh, initial uh, service to the country as a soldier made me to get into drdo unknowingly and uh, i have been fortunate to uh, participate in uh, almost all of the missile programs in some way or other and especially in my um, tenure at uh, 
ITR, Chandipur as director, I could see the successful trials and completion of many of the missile programs. And coming to the visit to the Leh, it has been a revisiting of my dad's uh, uh, battlefields and um, I could relate to each of the soldiers or the army camps that I passed by and uh, I could see my father. All right, so that is very inspiring. It is the father who told those great war stories to inspire the only son? Yes. Only yes. son. So Dr. Patrick, another story there. You probably grew up in Chennai wrestling to the, the Indian railway stories because your father was in railways. Yes. So what is that? You are a pakka pakka Chennai, yes. isn't it? Yes. So, uh, and uh, I understand your super senior was Dr. Kalam in your college in MIT, yes. right? So, uh, just take us through your initial upbringing and then your channelizing into aerospace and defense. Yeah. In a nutshell, if you could explain. My father was working in railways. Uh, those, ways, those days, uh, it was a steam engine. All right. So he was a master in the handling the steam engine. Okay. So, and also he was in the AMI, AMI we passed. All the drawings, uh, um, uh, details, whatever he is handling. Uh, it was more inspiring. Uh, that's, how, that's how I went into engineering, first of all. And then later on, I got into aeronautical engineering at MIT, Madras. And uh, uh, our uh, senior, our, uh, that time Dr. Kalam visited from, he was a DRDL director to our, uh, when I was in first year. So at that time there was a question from student side, so many missile program uh, you have taken up and not even a single missile flown. At that time he answered, soon it will come. So that was an inspiring uh, interview, was, uh, interaction with students uh, inspired me to get into this field. So the steam engine stories shared by your father yes. also eventually became an engine for your career. And then you, you know, you you passionately chased that, and went to MIT, and then then later on aeronautics. So let's come to your baby now, straight away, without any formalities. Nirbai, Nirbai, you know, has been in the news for the right and wrong reasons, and of late, very happy that it, you know, has inspired a lot of people in India with the success of the latest launch. So my first question to you as the boss of the Nirbhai program, as AD chief, what were the challenges of Mission Nirbhai? Having worked for the different class of missiles, in compared to the ballistic missiles or the tactical missiles, the cruise missiles, they fly long and um, they maneuver a lot and then the aircraft design drives the uh, cruise missile design and the system has to be very very compact and uh, though it takes off as a missile it has to transform itself into an aircraft mid-air the very configuration of the missile is quite different and uh, the long endurance combined with different altitudes. These are all the other driving factors compared to a ballistic or a tactical missile. The designers have to adopt a combination of missile technology as well as aircraft technology both in uh, structural design, propulsion, as well as the controls. The AD team has succeeded even in the very first uh, flight trial. Majority of the systems remained same from the first trial to the sixth trial. A few uh, subsystems need to undergo a little improvements so that uh, by the sixth trial, we have perfected the system. Okay, so uh, it's understandable that when you build something, there will be technological challenges, so you overcome it 
to the next one. So, you know, maybe we media look at, you know, you know like for us only two things are there, whether it's success or a failure. So you scientists probably look at it a different way. Uh, how long have you, you have been with this project right from the beginning of this thing? Yeah. All right. So let me just ask you, he talked about, touched upon a little bit of challenges. What has been the great lesson for Team Nebai if you, when you look back from the first launch to the sixth one, where the score now stands at 3-3, three, three, three complete successful mission and three partial success slash failure in whichever way you look at it. So as a man who was embedded to this project from the beginning, six missions when you talk about, this is a strategic program we understand. We cannot talk everything on a public domain. I'm very well aware of it, but generally to tell the young engineers of tomorrow, the people who chase this program, from the number one to number six, what were the challenges you, not not just challenges alone, what are the lessons the team had? Yeah, uh, first I'll start with the challenges. Uh, unlike the ballistic missile program, other missile uh, program, uh, here the stage suppression happens in the near horizontal condition. That was the uh, first time uh, uh, we are doing. So we need to do uh, undergo a lot of tests to state separation. State suppression. All right. So stage suppression happens near horizontal condition. So we need a lot of tests we have to do carry out, and uh, we are successful in that, and we have demonstrated in the uh, six flights. And uh, one more uh, learning experience was the air intake uh, engine interaction. Uh, we had some issues, we have sorted out, and uh, now the missile is flying well. And uh, we have advanced version also uh, getting ready. All right, so from one to six, these are the only lessons, you know, in the sense. And uh, one more was uh, regarding the wing deployment. Uh, what are the problems we have faced? We have uh, sorted out on ground and we are able to uh, successfully complete two successful, two successful missions. The focus at which Indian people, the AMA, and also, you know, everyone who has got interest in aerospace and defense programs, when the photograph of nearby six successful launch when it is out, I was very, very surprised to see the passion at which people follow this program. They did find out the changes in the wing, you know, when compared to the first missile and the next one, the placement of the of the wing. You know, like, did you make any changes in there, or it's all the same from the little changes in the mechanism components? Okay. Otherwise, uh, it is the same mechanism which was proven even before the first flight and uh, it did work in the first and second flights. We had to make uh, a few changes in the control uh, algorithms so that uh, we deploy the wing in the most favorable flight conditions. And uh, th these are the few things we learned uh, in the first three or four flights. The reports that came out soon after the sixth launch, officially released by the government from the Ministry of Defense and DRD or whatever you call it, uh, it very, very specifically said, you know, and that uh, this time for the sixth launch, the missile, the sea skimming capabilities, you know, it flew for a long time at a very, very close range in the sense. Uh, so how was that experience in the sense uh, for a scientist, you know, did it exactly perform the way you wanted? Very much. In the sense, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was, uh, there was a Su-30 uh, which chased it. Yes. So, uh, so uh, have we now completely, um, we completed those points in terms of the sea skimming abilities of the missile or we need to prove it more? 100% has been proven. 100%. Let me ask you, Dr. Patrick, what are the salient features of the, this missile? The first timers who are listening to this, or no, even otherwise, to hear from the host's mouth, the salient features of the missile. The missile is uh, vertically launched using a booster, and stage separation happened near horizontal condition, and the in-flight engine start is the uh, first time we have, uh, of this sort of missile we have proven. 
and the submerged air intake uh, design is also a new 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 challenge submerged air intake air intake uh, so for a common man what does it mean a submerged air intake how does he understand it this kind of uh, missile class uh, is uh, usually launched from a canister all right so it calls for a submerged air intake all right so as a development phase we have uh, already first time we have proven the submerged air intake for this uh, configuration so that's one of the salient features of the missile salient feature i don't want to listen to all but then the the key ones if you could just maybe you could also you know yeah yeah uh, the salient features uh, means um, it is designed um, for long endurance the low drag and uh, the wing is a very compact wing if you look at the missile you can't believe that this uh, missile can fly with such a small wing and uh, the shape of the wing has to fit into the uh, body because uh, it has to take off like a cylindrical uh, structure and then deploy the wing when it is in flight so the size and shape of the wing itself is decided by the the mission profile so uh, these are a, a few things that are uh, beyond even an aircraft design let me ask you what are the first nearby uh, the first only this missile as for the first like which compared to other missiles the nearby first if at all something like that nearby being a long endurance uh, uh, vehicle its um, navigation system has to be a very high accuracy and um, the algorithms used on inertial navigation system of this class of missile are different rather fine tuned for long endurance with high accuracy so this is uh, this differentiates this missile from other class of missiles and uh, secondly because of the long endurance you need to control the drag to as little as uh, as possible so the the vehicle uh, design and the control surfaces we call the uh, fins have to be optimized for this long endurance with the desired controllability all right so that way the vehicle design is dictated by its uh, mission uh, requirements a lot of times you know it's it's called as the desi tomahawk so is there any comparison like it is the desi tomahawk but you know so when you combine with the tomahawk missile the nearby tomahawk versus tomahawk so where does it stand as a cruise missile yes it is similar to tomahawk the other variants of nearby are about to come the for the good reasons the subsonic cruise missile has a potential uh, uh, play in a war scenario because of uh, subsonic speeds with a less fuel it can cover longer range and it can remain in flight for quite a long time these are the same features even even a tomahawk has yes. and uh, it can cruise at very low altitudes so let me ask you to let me just intercept and ask is there anything that this missile can do which tomahawk can't do we can't really say, say. yeah he, he, you uh, talked about here uh, yeah mr pesad talked about uh, the the variants that are being planned you know even i have written in the past the variants that are coming out so whatever little bit you can share about it so what are the kind of variants you know we know for any missile for different uses so it's understood but just to can you just say what are the variants coming out air launch version is one of the variants and uh, long range uh, land attack cruise missile from ship platform and on the ground as well is planned okay so uh, so 
compared to this, you, you are talked about three other variants, right? So three other variants. So all this will take, I am not looking at an exact date, but how much time will all this will make? like materialize, is it in the next five years you have any plan? Yeah, we have, plan. it's a five year plan. Plan, it's the next five year plan. All right, so um, the this missile, to you, you might be the right person to ask, how did it come to Bangalore? How did it land in Bangalore? You know, it's a very, very politically, you know, I would say that a lot of times people talk within the corridors of DRU, but how did this missile fly out of missile complex and land in Tipasandra in Bangalore? Uh, it, it is uh, nothing political to my um, knowledge. Not even one percent? No. Okay. It is driven by the uh, mandates of different laboratories. All right. The Aeronautical Development Establishment has been the design and development agency for uh, aircraft related uh, R&D as well as uh, aircraft carried weapons and uh, the target drones. If you look at uh, Laksha, which is a target drone, it is a high subsonic uh, jet engine powered waypoint navigating fully autonomous aircraft. Talking about Laksha? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and you've got two variants, it, right? It yeah. can also carry an external store right, okay. and release when it wants. So the technology was already there with ADE. It's only a question of change the role of instead of being a target drone, you now configure a missile, cruise missile. That is how the, the technology base, the knowledge base was already available with ADE. So it is an automatic choice that the cruise missile design came to KDE. How much of considering that India's all missile programs are under one roof or, you know, it's all in Hyderabad. And, uh, you know, was there any kind of difficulties in, you know, since it, it came here, was there any difficulties or everything was smooth? Absolutely no. Aeronautical Development Establishment, ADE, we call it as the lead, lead lab or the nodal lab for the nearby development. There are laboratories contributing to this, the RCI. All right, from the, the, from the missile cluster. The ASL and um, similarly different laboratories. In future, the GTRE is going to contribute. I wanted to just, before I forget, you talked about GTRE. So a lot of people have asked, uh, in fact, you know, this interview is choreographed, put together. A lot of tarmac followers across the globe have also contributed to these questions. Mm -hmm. So we had opened up a window uh, just soon after the sixth launch, and a lot of people asked questions. So we can't ask everything, but at least one question that a lot of people are very curious was, there were mixed reports. Some people had already reported saying that it flew with money, the last one. But then, they, then the later on, you know, it was clarified that it wasn't Manik. So when you said GTRE, I reminded, when will Manik enter? Or when will this missile fly with Manik? In about uh, in a year. In about a year. Yeah. So um, that means, you know, next in 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 the next one year, maybe we'll see one or two more launches of this missile. Yes. So Manik will be so. Uh, just a little bit of light if you can throw on Manik because there are a lot of people interested. It's a, you know, it's a Desi engine and you know stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, how far that has been progressed, the Manik? Um, all the ground tests have been completed. All right. And uh, the the in-house made engines from GTRE are ready, as well as the production version of the same engine is also ready. So they will be, GTRE will be giving the engines to ADE to integrate and uh, do the flight test, as I said, in a year. Okay. So when you replace an existing, this is just for academic interest, uh, I'm asking to you, Dr. Patrick, when you replace an existing engine and when you put a new engine and test it, what are the challenges there when a new, you know, 
like does it fit in the same format you know just but just for it to you know this is for the common man to understand you know even probably you know what are the challenges it's like if you could explain like a teacher uh, the first of all the engine airframe integration all is right. a challenge challenge okay. and uh, uh, integrate with the existing uh, submerged air intake is an added challenge so it should match the intake performance the engine should uh, get the required mass flow so that that is the one uh, first challenge so how do you overcome this challenge on ground you will do extensive yes, internal extensive, tests extensive extensive ground test uh, with ground high test, uh, okay. high speed high mark number facility we have uh, at gtre we will be testing at that facility and get the confidence of the engine performance you were part of lexia project right earlier yes yeah before coming to yes how much of the lessons of lexia have has helped you uh, in this particular project X uh, like Lexia also is a high speed vehicle of a 0.7 is a cruise mark number there's also having all the features uh, like a waypoint navigation low altitude cruise so and using the radar altimeter all this uh, same similar features are adapted and that is one that is one of the reason we got this project to AD also if i ask you to speak with points 1 2 3 specific to the last trial of nirbhay what are the key points nirbhay could tick in the last trial <clears throat> what are the things it did which it didn't do in the earlier trials especially the low altitude cruise one and um, flying close to the shore flying close to the shore yeah. all right is that so what does that uh, for a listener what does it mean to uh, when you have to fly low you have to be closer to the tracking systems all right whether it is uh, radars or telemetry if you have to be closer to them they are on the shore so you have to fly closer to the shore all right so that is number 2 number 2 and when you have to fly closer to the shore the confidence levels of the behavior of this missile should be very very high and the uh, precautionary measures to be uh, applied will be very very uh, stringent and the tracking systems performance uh, tracking a low altitude high speed flight also will be very stringent all right so that way both uh, the flying of this missile is a challenge even to the uh, test range all right okay okay and um, that's interesting yeah. yes yes and to chase this missile in flight and then see how it behaves um in flight uh is also a challenge because it descends to very very low altitudes so you're talking about the chase aircraft chase aircraft okay yeah um uh, again flying close to the shore so luckily we have a very good range test range who could um, help us out in uh, configuring a good flight trajectory all right and so that we can we could uh, verify all this uh, let me features. just stick with you uh, mr prasad just again and uh, you know an interest academic interest i'm just want to know chasing a missile from an aircraft you know it's something which is very rare countries might be doing it in cases of thing so just how does it happen in the sense first the aircraft will have to take off so can we just talk about the coordination that involves you know um so f- x date you decided the launch yes so we're all set yes. countdown is it that that time it takes you know, how we we only say our uh, mission profile all right and uh, tentative dates all right and um, the how long it should be tracked to up to what waypoint all right it is uh, decided by the indian air force which type of aircraft right they deploy and since the flight will be over the sea all right so they decide uh, whether it is to be a single engined aircraft or twin engined aircraft so, and the endurance of that aircraft should also match with the endurance of this missile and uh, for this purpose uh, uh, Indian Air Force uh, decided to fly uh, Sukhoi 
and it was specifically flown from uh, Tejpur to Kalaikonda and uh, they took off as per the uh, countdown sequence and they reached the launch site and then uh, followed the trajectory, trajectory. Right. yes if you track the history of ade uh, okay this could be because uh, i want to just come to you first and then go to him so many projects in the past you know dexia uh, nishan we have as journalists we have tracked all almost all the programs then uh, it gets on to the user phase where the ultimately the user calls the shot you know it needs to be indexed you know so there there could have been maybe some areas of concerns all that i'm not getting into it now but i understand now the next set of trials for nirbhay is going to be the user trials you know where the user will play a major role uh, so how does the now when the user sits there i know and it's it's going to be user trial it definitely involves a different set of new set of ideas new set of demands all that so how 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 prepared are you the team the nearby team you know i would want to hear from both of you first you and then mm. well, actually before going into the user trial we are working on the nearby variants so we have some other challenges to to be proven so those things will be uh, implemented in the new variants once that matures to some level then we are going in the program going for the user trials so are you saying uh, the next seventh trial of you know i don't want an exact date or thing mm -hmm. no because this was the general uh, you know we would say this is what my understanding was so the user trial is some time away or the next one is not going to be a user trial we call it as a user trial when we either demonstrate it to the user all right as per his uh, say number of waypoints or all right yeah the next level of user trial will be allow the user to operate all right he will sit and launch so this will require further interaction with the users and uh, in due course shortly it will be so uh, the done. so are you seeing that the focus of uh, team nebai now shifts to the different variants yes so that is the focus from after all these things okay so um, we we spoke about uh, you know all these challenges all that now let's let me just want to get on to one very critical thing often drdo uh, gets into the you know you know gets uh, you know encountered with this one particular thing different sections how much of desi content indigenous content does this missile carry you know i you know one ref figures you know i'm sure once money comes in the the number will grow but then as of now what are the desi systems that are critical to this because you know under the make in india all that everybody talks about make in india so it's important that we need to also tell our viewers you know yeah how much of a desi missile this is by way of um, the costing it's about 70% indigenous when the gtre engine comes it will be 100% indigenous and we are going to put an indigenous seeker into this so the missile will remain 100% indigenous uh, most of the materials the subsystems machining manufacturing uh, even the composite structures like wings fins everything is actuators everything is done in india seeker is an area where there are a lot of concerns always because we need to catch up for, not just for nearby like generally the seeker technology was something that was denied and now hyderabad rca and others are you know full into it so when will nearby eventually fly with a desi seeker is it some is it the next flight or it will take some more time the indigenous seeker for uh, cruise missiles is already available with uh, drdl yes the bramos bramos yeah the ad team have already adopted that seeker and uh, carried out the uh, design we call it as uh, integrating the seeker mechanically and okay. electrically and software 
these studies have already been completed. Okay, all right. So uh, it will eventually fly with this particular yes. sector, yeah. So as of now, it is not a Desi seeker that is being flown into. We didn't fly the seeker. Oh, all yet. right. Okay. We, we have flown it in a simulated mode. Achha, okay. So the Nubai has not yet flown with the seeker. Yes. A lot of uh, seeker testing online, an advanced stage of testing has been completed. So soon we'll be flying with the seeker. That is good news. I'm sure a lot of people are going to pick up this point because, you know, there is a lot of curiosity among people, uh, you know, the, about this indigenous content. What are the, you have been silent all through the interview, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, and he's doing all the talking. What are the critical technologies India as a country, nation, mastered thanks to Nirbhai? One is the navigation system. Uh, okay, one is the navigation, navigation system, yeah. and uh, and this class, this class of missile requires a uh, very uh, 0.03 degree per hour class uh, INS system. That kind of system our uh, sister lab already developed. That is one of the main thing, and uh, and uh, our uh, other lab, DRDO lab, GTI has developed already the Manik engine, right. engine advanced level of testing. Okay. There's another feature, and as a director already mentioned, the seekers. Uh, not only DRDL, uh, there is one more seeker has been designed by RCA team. All right. That is also available to us. So, so we have a choice of two seekers. Now. Yes. Now with the problem of plenty. <laughs> yes. So mostly next mission we'll be having a flight with seeker. All right. Are you a scientist, missile scientist? Now, did you visualize planning anything? The generation next technologies that could be embedded into this. Because, you know, missile technology is growing, uh, you know, at supersonic speeds, isn't it? So we, we keep hearing a lot of, you know, system on chips and stuff like that. Just for, you know, is there something like that? All that is coming into this? The new set of technologies, maybe in future? Uh, definitely. Um, these missiles, uh, though they are fire and forget, you may, uh, because of its long endurance, and maneuvering capabilities, you may like to have a in-flight target designation. Oh, okay, that's a, okay. Yeah, and uh, that requires additional communication capabilities for the missile. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there is something called uh, digital scene correlation, uh, DESMAC we call it. Digital scene correlation. This is basically the mem the memory, yes, yes. the inbuilt memory, right? The terminal phase. The yeah. terminal phase. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the few uh, additional features we may add. Somebody was asking a question on uh, the tarmac Facebook. Uh, can it fly at supersonic speeds at the terminal level? No. The present it, it configuration. <coughs> it will always remain as a subsonic missile. Its variants can have. Yes, as Daniel pointed out, one of the variants also we are planning in the future with supersonic. Brilliant. All good things have to end. So we are in the landing phase of this interview. We talked about the missile technology, all that stuff. Now the team. Uh, I understand, you know, Nibai is one of the most inspiring teams DOD has got put together here at ADE. Uh, can you just talk about the Nibai team a little bit, you know, the mix? All youngsters, I'm being told, in the in the 40s average age. Yeah, we have a very energetic, enthusiastic team. Let it be in uh, aerodynamics, structures, propulsion, control, overall uh, mission design. We have a good team, experienced team. They have gone through the. Ups, and, ups downs. and downs, which are part of the game. So when you say ups and downs, part of the game means this, not just this project, the projects in the past? Both uh, the projects in the past as well as uh, this project itself. So we had uh, our share of lessons to learn and uh, it requires a big heart to take if we have to improve big heart to improve in a hard way. Yeah. So Patrick, you are the youngest among the team. Uh, you could be 50 plus. Yes. You're all right. So what is that you, how do you inspire your team? The, basically the team consists of a lot of youngsters. Okay. Uh, in flight mechanic group, a lot of ladies. Uh, the, oh, that's a great. software group uh, is fully handled by uh, lady scientists. 
Okay, uh, so the, so the software group is, uh, is headed by headed by uh, lady so scientists as well as the group also full of ladies. The similar AD story with Tejas. Yes. I remember doing some twenty years back, and a team was uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so uh, the same same team was uh, coding for Nirbhay as well. Okay, all right, and uh, very good uh, procedures are followed, uh, which was followed for LCA. IV and V team is very strong. So women follow good procedures and men follow it, is that what you're saying? The system demands everyone to follow. The, the, yeah, the system yeah. demands everyone to follow. ADE as an organization and Nirbhaya as a project, both have seen lots of ups and downs. As the head of this organization and as also part of uh, you, a uh, very senior director for the project, how do you take on this constant mix of success and failure by stride? Yeah. See, uh, the very word aeronautical, that means you have to leave the ground. When you fly, the result is zero or one. The success we call zero or one. There is nothing like, um, I will correct it on the fly. If you take a, a ground system like radar, if it doesn't perform to the 100% uh, uh, specifications, you will observe it, you will note it down, you will analyze and uh, redo it, improve it. You don't lose the radar. But a flight vehicle, when it has to uh, be flown, if it is not done perfect, you are going to lose it. And you can't make sure unless you fly it. So that's the uh, dilemma. At some point you have to draw a line that, yes, I have done to the best of my knowledge. I will take the risk. Let me fly it. And you are ready to accept what comes out. Only thing we have to make sure we are going to either meet a 100% success or if there is going to be a underperformance, we should be able to telemeter so that we know for sure where to improve. Brilliant way of putting it across like a senior scientist. So failure numbers could be more generally with any projects. Success comes later. So what is that Dr. Pat, the most nightmarish experience for Dr. Patrick being in these programs? Yes, that NGL 04 mission was a real uh, real uh, learning experience for us. Already we have flown three times without any problems of the wing deployment. In the fourth flight, uh, there was a wing deployment failure. It was very much uh, surprising to us. Then later on, uh, looking at the data, we could see a lot of curious uh, points we have missed out, which is a serious uh, implication. Uh, then that was uh, gone into several reviews and we sorted out and we overcome the problem and we had Zero, NGL 05 and 06, two successful missions. So all the failures uh, teach us some lesson. So we have to identify that uh, particular point and uh, learn from it. As I told you earlier, a lot of Tarmac followers have asked questions. So there was one question from one of the followers which asked about whether this missile is capable of doing swarm missions. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a very general thing, but I'm sure it is capable, isn't it? It is capable. <coughs> But uh, there are different uh, notions of what is a swarm. Uh, but to the best of my knowledge, this class of weapons doesn't require a, a swarm. It all depends on the end application. But these missiles are, uh, they can capable of meeting the end requirements all along. All right, so there's another question from another follower which who asked about the loitering capabilities of this missile. So could you just, it is capable of, uh, of loitering, it is a loitering missile, isn't it? Yes, uh, already we have flown one of the missions, 1000 kilometers. So the target point is known and its uh, target is going to come up in a short time. We can loiter around the target and wait for the target and hit. The navigational features right now, it is a GPS, uh, so it can in future, that's a, again another question from a follower, IRNSs and you know, all, all that, it is... It, it is uh, ready for any such uh, upgrades. 
it's been a very very uh, different kind of an interview uh, two very soft spoken scientists part of uh, india's subsonic cruise missile program and uh, you know uh, in fact uh, both of them will agree that uh, uh, coming to this stage and sitting together and talking itself is behind the scene is a big story. Yes. One day probably you will write in the, your book, <laughs> isn't it? How did we, uh, you know, come and sit here? So uh, it was a pleasure talking to both of you. Um, uh, you know, yes, sometimes, you know, the media is uh, too critical, but then, you know, everybody has to play a role. Uh, thank you so much. And th this is the first time that this tarmac talking uh, came into you, flying in with lots of questions from the followers, uh, students, uh, you know, engineers, scientists from abroad, a lot of people. Uh, so we, uh, you know, we also now, they're also part of this particular program. Uh, it's always inspiring to meet people who have given their life to missions like this. And uh, thank you so much. So as always, you know, we part with this gift to, uh, you know, this is a mug. And, uh, you know, uh, we keep telling everyone this will inspire you. And, uh, you know, uh, this is from all of us, from also from the Tarmac family uh, to you, sir. And, it uh, goes to my colleague. All right. Okay. So why don't you give it to him? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, Tarmac okay. is, uh, okay. and, uh, I, and, there, mm. and there are a lot of scientists from the Mbaya and AD team also mm. follows Tarmac. Yeah, yeah Tarmac, uh, I have seen in the net a uh, lot of, uh, with uh, not just uh, delivering the news, with the technical details you're providing and the, the future program details also you will be you are you are you are showing to the viewers it is just not tarmac there are a lot of other blogs around you know the whole idea is to to inspire them uh, and you know to make them partner to uh, you know whatever you guys do uh, so you know sometimes it's difficult to get information but then whenever we get it in whatever format uh, because the people uh, the, are, are very curious about it thank you so much we will uh, just wishing you success for all your future missions Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you. So you will thank, thank you. you. Yeah. That was Tarmac talking with the inspiring team nearby of Aeronautical Development Establishment, DRDO in Bangalore. Very, very interesting facts of this missile program, straight from the host's mouth, different aspects of scientists' life, technology, uh, the might of the missile, as well the human side. I hope. We managed to cover a little bit of everything to satisfy your long and never-ending needs. And for the first time, we have included many of your questions, most of the questions clapped together, whatever you have posed to us. Tarmac Talking has taken a very, very definite and inspiring shape. The feedback has been very, very overwhelming. We will be back with you with more such stories from India's aerospace and defense sector. Thank you so much. A big, big thank you to everyone who followed this blog. Jai.